Good evening, brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. Hi. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. We will be reading verses 11 on to verse 13. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner do evil an hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he Feareth not before God. And now go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Okay? Romans. Romans chapter 14. <clears throat> Romans chapter 14. Verses 9 on to verse 13. Romans chapter 14, verses 9 on to verse 13. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why does, dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Now, the judgment here within the chapter of Romans 14 is talking about verse 5. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. And verse 3. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. Okay, the judgment is talking about in regards of esteeming one day above another and what you eat. But the principles from verses 9 on to 13 is when you judge someone, not according to scripture, but by the outside, right? Okay, are we, are we together on that? Yes. Okay. But more importantly for this video, verse 12. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Okay? Now today, in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, you and I who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, we're going to heaven whether we like it or not. What's going to be tried at the judgment seat of Christ is our works for our rewards, not our salvation. While at the white, uh, great white throne of judgment, those who are lost, those who are fake, they're going to be judged for their works at the great white throne of judgment. And guess what? At the great white throne of judgment, it ain't looking too good. Okay? so. For us, 
So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Judgment, okay? This, this video, we're going to be primarily in the Old Testament. What happens when someone of the Church of the Living God decides sin over God's righteousness? What happens when someone of the Church of the Living God goes way too far in their sin? It says here, and we'll look at this later, about how uh, to hand one over to, uh, for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. You remember that? We'll look at that later towards the end of this video. Go to the book of Lamentations. Now, this is going to be primarily for our instruction in righteousness. Okay? And for this particular video within the book of Lamentations, we're going to go through Lamentations chapter 3. Okay? Lamentations chapter 3. If I can get there, okay? Lamentations chapter 3. Now, the book of Lamentations is the prophet Jeremiah lamenting over the destruction of Jerusalem, of the Jewish people going into captivity under the hand of King Nebuchadnezzar. Okay? All right? Some things to remember. Doctrinally and dispensationally, this is not for us. Doctrinally. Dispensationally, this is clearly about the Jews and for the Jewish people. Okay? But what we can learn from this is, number one, you have to remember that the Jew is the apple of God's eye. God's chosen people are the Jew. We, the Gentile, are grafted into the tree of the Jew. Okay? But the apple of God's eye, to this very day, is still the Jewish people. That You ain't going to get around that, okay? Okay? And because the Jew in number was so small, that is why the Lord set his love upon the Jewish people, okay? Okay? What we need to remember, what we need to remember is God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, allowed this to happen unto his own people. And there are a lot of us out there who mess around, who put our hands where they shouldn't, who put things before our eyes that we shouldn't where our feet take us places where we should never be going. And there are those out there who are afraid for the wrong reasons. Do you fear the Lord? Hmm? Do you fear the Lord? Because also, too, remember here, brother, sister, okay? The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. One God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, Spirit, Soul, and Body. One God, okay? It's one and the same. One God, Jesus Christ, God our Father. And this is what he allowed to happen unto his own people. Don't, don't think any one of you out there who are messing around, backsliding, backsliding is an Old Testament term. Yes, it is. It does not appear in the New Testament. But the principle is, is sliding back from where you were standing, kind of like apostasy, kind of, okay? But see, when backsliding appears, it only appears in the Old Testament, okay? But the principle is, those who are of the chosen people, the Jew, backsliding from their God. For our instruction in righteousness, for those of you of the church of the living God, who are choosing men, 
who are choosing to be one of the boys rather than standing to the scriptures and that these are your authority, not your feelings. You feel me? We need to remember that when we're reading this. Okay? Now we're going to read this whole chapter and look at several corresponding uh, verses of Scripture within the Old Testament to learn something. Okay? This is going to be a long video with a lot of Scripture. Can you handle this? Hmm? I hope you can. Because we're going to read, we're going to go through quite a bit of Scripture today. Let's go. Don't look at me. Look at the book. Now, because of the enormity of this chapter, 66 verses, <gasps> I'm going to start by reading verses 1 on to verse 16. Okay? Uh, by the way, if you have a ribbon marker, use it. Okay? Lamentations chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. I am the man that has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He hath led me and brought me into darkness, but not into light. Surely against me is he turned. He turneth his hand against me all the day. Now, from verses, by the way, verse 2 on to verse 16, keep a mental note of the he in here, okay? Thus far, from verse 2 on to verse 3, we see he three times, right? Let's continue at verse 4. My flesh and my skin hath he made old. He hath broken my bones. He hath built it against me, and compassed me with gall and travail. He hath set me in dark places, as they that be dead of old. He hath hedged me about, that I cannot get out. He hath made my chain heavy. Also when I cry and shout, he shutteth out my prayer. He hath enclosed my ways with hewn stone. He hath made my paths crooked. He was unto me as a bear lying in wait, and as a lion in secret places. He hath turned aside my ways, and pulled me in pieces. He hath made me desolate. He hath bent his bow, and set me as a mark for the arrow. He hath caused the arrows of his quiver to enter into my reins. I was a derision to all my people, and their song all the day. He hath filled me with bitterness. He hath made me drunken with wormwood. He hath also broken my teeth with gravel stones. He hath covered me with ashes. Now, have you noted how many times he has been mentioned? The Lord, Jesus Christ, God our Father, he, he has done all this. He has done all this unto his chosen people. Okay? Why? Because they sinned against him and chose not the fear of the Lord, but chose their own ways. Go to Leviticus. Go to Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus chapter 26, verses 1 on to verse 33. Leviticus chapter 26, verses 1 on to verse 33. Ye shall make you no idols, nor graven image. Neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall ye set up an image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. 
I am the Lord. Now today, we are not commanded to keep the Sabbath, okay? The Sabbath was a sign for the Jewish people, okay? Today in this dispensation, we do not keep the Sabbath, okay? Let's continue. If ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season. And the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. And your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time. And ye shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely. And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will re rid evil beasts out of the land. Neither shall the sword go through your land. And ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase an hundred, and an hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. And ye shall eat old store, and bring forth the old because of the new. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul, yes, God has a soul, the soul of the Godhead, okay? The Father, okay? And my soul shall not abhor you, and I will walk among you and will be your people and ye and be your god and ye shall be my people okay now for our instruction in righteousness think about this think about this okay you do what this book says what the scriptures say for you to do today in this dispensation okay Persecution from the enemy will come. For all who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Yes. But tell me something. Is your persecution, are the troubles, the tribulations, the stress in your life coming because you are following the scriptures? Or are you just Kind of looking at them, well, they're kind of like guidelines that no don't need to be followed, huh? Tell me something. Tell me. Look at me. Look at me. When you've been obedient unto the word, hath not the Lord blessed you? But when you have chosen that which he abhors, are you being chastened? Now, see, those of you who are not of the church of the living God, you don't get that. Because you're bastards. You're bastards. If you're not being chastened of the Lord, you don't know who your father is. But if you are of the church of the living God, you receive chastening. You with me? But now, note the turn in here. <clears throat> verse 13 on to verse 33 now. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt. For our instruction in righteousness, our Lord Jesus Christ rescued us from the world to take us onto heaven with him. Okay? Take us out of Egypt, the world, our lost life. Okay? I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye should not be their bondmen. And I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. Verse 14. But if ye will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant. Now, doctrinally and dispensationally, again, this is for the Jews. Our instruction in righteousness, though, 
Okay. Do you despise his statutes? Hmm? Does your soul abhor his judgments? Hmm? Hmm? Do you do what this book says, Church of the Living God? Again, this is not directed to all of you, but to the few who are actually of the Church of the Living God and messing around. Verse 16, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror. And what does it say? That God hath not given us the spirit of fear? In 2 Timothy chapter 2, I believe it is, or 2 Timothy chapter 1. Okay? I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning agate that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. Oh, get a load of that one. Get a load of that one. Let that one roll around in your head a little bit. Let the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, um, open that one up onto you a little bit. Okay? And I will set my face against you. And ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth. Think about what's going on today, especially here in my nation. The people are in terror, and they're fleeing when none pursueth. And if you will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then will I punish you seven times more for your sins. And I will break the pride of your power. And I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. And your strength shall be spent in vain. For your land shall not yield her increase. Neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. And if ye walk contrary unto me and will not hearken unto me i will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins those of us of the church of the living god who ought to know better ought not to dabble in the things of the world you understand yes we sin. Yes, we do. But I'm getting sick and tired of people making excuses. I'm struggling. Oh, I'm struggling. Is it a struggle? Is it a war? Hmm? And if ye walk contrary unto me and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. I will also send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children, and destroy your cattle, and make you few in number, and your highways shall be desolate. And if you will not be reformed by me, by, all, by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you. And will punish you seven times for your sins. Now, today, we are part of his body, bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. Okay? He will not, he cannot deny himself. But don't you think for one second, brother or sister, that if you walk contrary unto our Lord Jesus Christ, especially if you are a brother or a sister, don't you for one second think you're going to get away with it. Do you understand? And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you, and ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. 
And when I have broken the staff of your bread, famine, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and ye shall eat and not be satisfied. And if ye will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, now note the change here, then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. Now we today are not appointed to wrath. Okay, God's wrath is the time of Jacob's trouble. But let me let me break a little news to you here, okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, gets angry. He's angry at the wicked every day. But what more sore punishment, what more unto you of the Church of the Living God who constantly are in sin? There is such a thing, brethren. There is such a thing as someone of the Church of the Living God who is clinging to their sin rather than clinging to the scriptures. And the Lord speaks through the scriptures. Hello. Okay. Are you afraid of God? Are you afraid of God? We're going to determine that, hopefully, Lord willing. Let's continue. Now, this is specifically right here was a prophecy fulfilled when the children of Israel did this. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat. They, that was fulfilled in the book of the Kings. Um, and actually, uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 29, go ahead and look that up on your own time. Okay, let's continue. And I will destroy your high places and cut down your images and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. And I will make your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation, and I will not smell the savor of your sweet odors, and I will bring the land into desolation. And your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen, the diaspora, this already happened. And I will draw out a sword after you. And your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. Now, this is what happened, what God did unto his people, the Jews. Okay? Some of this was fulfilled with during the Holocaust. More of this will be fulfilled during the time of Jacob's trouble. Oh, beg your pardon, excuse me. Okay. But the instruction in righteousness is you have to remember if our lovey dovey teddy bear, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is merciful, slow to anger, yes. Church of the Living God, do, do you want to try the Lord Jesus Christ? Huh? Hmm? Are you going to indulge in sin and then be like, oh, I'll just repent about it later? Lord rebuke you. You, you, you done got some problems with that sin. You done got some problems with that sin. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Song of Moses. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 21 on the verse 42. They have moved me to jealousy with, with, with that which is not God. 
They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those, with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Us Gentiles being grafted into their tree. Okay? Okay? Instruction and righteousness. Um, are you provoking the Lord with your vanities? Hmm? You are the church of the living God. Are you seriously testing the jealousy of our Lord Jesus Christ? You need to think about that. Let's continue. For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will send mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger, and devoured with burning heat, and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them, with the poison of serpents of the dust. A lot of this, I truly believe, has been fulfilled within the Holocaust. Um, more fulfillment will be during the time of Jacob's trouble. But uh, you watch my the videos on the Holocaust; these tie into um, tie into the. You can tie this into the Holocaust of the Jew quite readily. Okay, but let's continue. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin. The suckling also with the man of gray hairs. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the rem remembrance of them to cease from among men. Now, here's a little mercy for you. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. Oh, I don't care if I have any resort, uh, rewards getting into heaven. I, I, don't, I don't understand that mentality. I really don't. I really don't. I don't understand that. Someone will have to try to explain it to me because I don't get that. Just wanting to get into heaven by the skin of your teeth, right? You're going to heaven. If you're saved, born again, converted, church of the living God. Today, this dispensation, you are sealed until the day of redemption. You're going to go, whether you like it or not. But when you get there, are you going to hear, well done? Or is the Lord going to be ashamed of you for letting you in? Because he cannot deny himself. Something for you to think about. Oh, brother, sister. You need to stop messing around if you're messing around. Is there something wrong with you? Seriously. Let's continue. <clears throat> How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? For their rock is not as our capital R rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. Let me read that again. 
To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For our instruction in righteousness, if you are of the church of the living God, messing around with sin, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. Are you afraid of God? Are you afraid of God? I, I, I'm not talking to you fakes. I'm not talking to you infiltrators. No. Church of the living God. Are you afraid of God? For the Lord, for the Lord shall judge his people. And repent himself for his servants, when he seeth that their power is gone, and there is none shut up or left. Reference right there unto the time of Jacob's trouble. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted? Just believe, just believe, right? Or, I'll repent of it later. Do you fear God? Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. <clears throat> For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and make my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall, be, shall devour flesh and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges Upon the enemy. Hmm. Why do we look at that? To show you. That what happened to these people. The Jewish people. During this dispensation. Was because they had turned against God. And we have just saw. Here in uh, Lamentations chapter 3. From verses 2. On to verse 16. Did you count how many times you saw he in there? And we today think that our Lord doesn't hold us to such a standard. You got problems if you're thinking that way. Let's continue now in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 17 on to verse 20. And thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. I forgot prosperity. And I said, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Remembering mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall. My soul hath had them, my soul hath had hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. Go to Amos chapter 4. Amos chapter 4. Amos chapter 4. Verses 6 on to verse 13. Amos chapter 4. And I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities, and want of bread in all your places. Cleanness of teeth, not eating. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. And also I have withholden the rain from you, when there were yet three months to the harvest, and I caused it to rain upon one city, and caused it not to rain upon another city. 
One piece was rained upon, and the piece whereupon it rained not withered. So two or three cities wandered on to one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Beg your pardon. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have smitten you with blasting and mildew, when your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increased. The palmer worm devoured them. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. Your young men have I slain with the sword, and have taken away your horses. And I have made the stink of your camps to come up unto your nostrils. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Okay, verse 5, 1, verse 8, 2, verse 9, 3, verse 10, 4. Four times, and yet ye have not returned unto me. Those of you of the Church of the Living God, you need to need to think about something. Is it possible that some of you may be being chastised of the Lord, but yet you don't want to acknowledge it as chastisement of the Lord? Have you ever thought of that? Hmm? Have you ever thought of that? Is the Lord trying to get your attention? Church of the living God, those of you who are dabbling in sin, hmm? who are excusing your sins, justifying your sins. Hmm? Is he afflicting you? Are you being chastened and are you not yet returning on to him? Check this out. I have overthrown some of you as God overthrown, overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and ye were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning the fifth time. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Five, the number of death. Note this, look at verse 12. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel. And because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. To hand them over for the destruction of the flesh, so that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Handed them over unto Satan so that they may learn not to blaspheme. There's only so far that you can play around. I can't believe I'm saying it like this. There's only so long, brother, sister, that you can play around with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, until you leave him no other choice but to drop you. Then you get up to the judgment seat of Christ. Yes, you're going to go in. Yes, you're going to go to heaven. Again, I, I, I can't, I can't understand. I can't understand it. I don't care if I have any rewards. But yet you would rather know that at the judgment seat of Christ that our Lord Jesus Christ is ashamed of you. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, just get in there. Go. I don't get it, man. I don't get it. I don't get it. Verse 13. For lo, he that formeth the mountains and createth the wind, and declareth unto man what is his thought, that maketh the morning darkness and treadeth upon the high places of the earth. The Lord, the God of hosts, is his name. See, we are the church of the living God. 
we know that we are to fear the Lord, of course. To fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding, right? But brethren, hmm, why don't you take your temperature gauge on your fear of the Lord? Do you understand what I'm saying? Back to Lamentations. <clears throat> Verses 21 on to verse 36 now. Now here is where it's going to get interesting. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. To the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence, because he hath borne it upon him. He putteth his mouth to the dust. If so, be, there may be hope. Do whatever you can to get rid of that sin and to get back in fellowship with the Lord. He giveth his cheeks, his cheek to him that smiteth him. He is filled full with reproach. The Lord will not cast off forever, but though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he doth not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. To crush under his feet all the prisoners of the earth. To turn aside the right of a man before the face of the Most High. To subvert a man in his cause. The Lord approveth not. Psalm 145. Psalm 145. Psalm 145, verses 8, on to verse 21. The sheer long-suffering mercy and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, ought to give you even more cause to fear the Lord exceedingly. You understand? Psalm 145, verses 8 on to verse 21. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Good to all. You know, you wicked heretics out there, all you lost people, you fakes. The fact that he gave you breath today in hope that you would be broken of yourself and sorrowful for what you did to the Lord. You know, repentance. <laughs> the Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. The fact that you were given today, you wicked people, and those of you of the church of the living God, the fact that he has given you today, when we ain't promised today. Hmm? All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. 
They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Hold your place right here. Go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. There you are. Philippians chapter 2. <clears throat> Verses 9 on to verse 11. In Philippians chapter 2. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Back to Psalm 145. Picking up at verse 13. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endure throughout all generations. Referring to the millennial kingdom. Okay? The kingdom of heaven. Okay? It's going to, after Satan is loosed and the lake of fire, okay? It's going to endure forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Okay? Once the Lord come back at the second coming and establishes his kingdom, who's going to overthrow it? The Lord upholdeth all that fall and raiseth up all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand and satisfieth the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all them that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Psalm 33. Psalm 33. Psalm 33, verses 10, under verse 22. Psalm 33, verses 10, under verse 22. Did I say 32? Beg your pardon. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. The Lord looketh from heaven, he beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth their hearts alike, he considereth all their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. A horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. Upon them that hope in his mercy. To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. <laughs> Even so come Lord Jesus. For our hearts shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us, according as we hope in thee. 
Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Hmm. One would argue that might be the problem for some of you. You think of all the benefits. But you don't want to give up that what your flesh lusteth after. You're going to go after the lust of your flesh and just claim the blessings of the Lord. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. <laughs> he hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Remember how we read in Lamentations? His mercies are new every morning. Okay. You lost wicked heretics. You easy believism. Fakes. <clears throat> he hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. If the Lord dealt with all of us after our sins and after our iniquities, there would be nobody left. Nobody left. Some of you mock that. A lot of you take that for granted. Don't you? Don't you? Don't you? For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgression, transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Psalm 119. 
Psalm 119. His mercies are new every morning. Remember? Psalm 119. Uh, let me find that. Let me find that. <clears throat> teth. Psalm 119. Teth. You don't know where that is? That's verse 65 on to verse 72. Teth in Psalm 119, verses 65 on to verse 72. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have, to, for I have believed thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now have I kept thy word. Thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, <laughs> but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Ezekiel, Ezekiel. Now remember, while we are looking at these doctrinally and dispensationally, this is for the Jewish people. This is instruction in righteousness, okay? Because there are some of you out there, even of the Church of the Living God, that look at the Lord Jesus Christ as if he is a big teddy bear. <laughs> hmm. You have to remember the fear of the Lord, beloved. Ezekiel chapter 18. We're going to do some skipping around here. Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 19 on to verse 23. Keeping in mind the dispensational and doctrinal differences here. Okay? During this dispensation, it was faith and works. Eternal security was not there like it is today. Again, this is instruction in righteousness. If we feared the Lord the way we ought to fear the Lord, half of the stuff within the church of the living God wouldn't be going on. Ezekiel 18, verses 19 on to verse 23. Yet ye say, Why doth not the Son bear the iniquity of the Father, when the Son hath done that which is lawful and right, and hath kept all my statutes, and hath done them? He shall surely live. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. That's the dispensational difference there. The Son shall not bear the iniquity of the Father, neither shall the Father bear the iniquity of the Son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. What's important to note here is turn from. Keeping in mind the doctrinal dispensational difference here, but the turn from. Turn from. You know what? Uh, get your pen and go ahead and circle that. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live, he shall not die. All his transgression, all his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, 
he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God? And not that he should return from his ways and live. Return from his ways. Ah, another way you could say that is repent. Skip down now the verses 30 on to verse 32 in Ezekiel 18. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. <laughs> Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have, trans have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Okay? Now go back to Lamentation. Go back to Lamentations. Verses 37 on to verse 54. Who is he that saith, and it cometh to pass, when the Lord commandeth it not? Out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth not evil and good? Wherefore doth a living man complain, a man for the punishments, for the punishment of his sins? Like Peter said, go find this on your own time. Better to suffer for what's doing right, according to the scriptures, than you getting your hand caught in a cookie jar. I just paraphrase that, but you go find that. You go find that reference in First Peter. Okay? Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Don't worry, we'll be getting to that one at, towards the end of this video. I, 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 have, I feel you, what you're thinking, okay? Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let us lift up our heart with our hands unto the God, unto God in the heavens, excuse me. We have transgressed and have rebelled. Thou hast not pardoned. Thou hast covered with anger and persecuted us. Thou hast slain, thou hast not pitied. Thou hast covered thyself with a cloud that our prayers should not pass through. Thou hast made us as the offscoring and refuge in the midst of all of the people. Excuse me. All our enemies have opened their mouths against us. Fear and snare, fear and a snare is come upon us, desolation and destruction. Mine eye runneth down with rivers of water for the destruction of the daughter of my people. <clears throat> Mine eye trickleth down and ceaseth not, without enter without any intermission, till the Lord look down. And behold, from heaven, mine eye affecteth mine heart because of all the daughters of my city. Mine enemies chased me sore, like a bird without cause. They have cut off my life in the dungeon and cast a stone upon me. Waters flowed over mine head. Then I said, I am cut off. Now, go to Haggai. Haggai. Go to the book of Haggai, chapter 1. 
Haggai is before the book of Zechariah, and Zechariah is before the book of Malachi. Okay? If you can't find it, go to the very start of the New Testament and go backwards. Okay? Haggai, chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 11. Don't worry about the reference in the New Testament. We will get there eventually. Okay? Haggai chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 11. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Ye have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <clears throat> Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood. And build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts? Because of mine house that is waste. And ye run every man unto his own house. Lightly esteeming the rock of your salvation? Running on to your own house? The audacity of putting the scriptures in a second place over yourself, over your indulgences, over your flesh. I, I, I said this the other day onto a one. Uh, when it comes to people making excuses why they're not in the scriptures, knowing a man with four children who gets up at 2.30 in the morning on a farm and spends at least 45 minutes a day in the scriptures, um, you're not, <laughs> if you talk to me ever about, you know, why you're not in the scriptures, you're not going to get much sympathy from me on that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Let's continue. Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I call for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil and upon that which the ground bringeth forth and upon men and upon cattle and upon all the labor of the hands. Now, in regards to fellowship with the Lord, you've sown much, but a uh, little came in. Hmm? Because look at verse 9, and you run every man unto his own house, and you are the church of the living God. You have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwelling within you. Okay? Are you in Goodness, man. Woman, right now at this time, it's not the time to take your eyes away from the Lord and to give yourself over to the lusts of your flesh. Now is not the time to make justification for your sin. Especially this soon to the catching away uh you you watch brother aaron's recent video on the catching away of the body of christ before the time of jacob's trouble i'm going to put that video in there huh. praise the lord um this close you're still justifying things still excusing things still messing around with the lord <laughs> we all need to get very afraid 
of the Lord. Very afraid. Very afraid. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Verses 1 on to verse 4. Psalm 51. Verses 1 on to verse 4. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, against thee, thee only have I sinned and done, that, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Got a whole video on the, uh, this psalm alone. I might uh, link it in this one as well. Go to Micah. Micah chapter 6. Micah chapter 6. Micah chapter 6. Verses 1 on to verse 9. Micah chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 9. Hear ye now what the Lord saith. Arise, contend thou before the mountains, and let the hills hear thy voice. Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's controversy. And ye strong foundations of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with his people, and he will plead. Israel. O my people, O my people, what have I done unto thee? And wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me. Are you mad that the Lord doesn't want you to touch certain things that are harmful to you? All sin is harmful to you? Do you sometimes resent the fact that he says no when your flesh says yes? But what do you choose? What do you choose? See, even those who are saved and born again, converted of the church of the living God, can make the very same choices that you wicked heretics do. See, the difference is, Chastisement comes when you guys just revel in it. And that guilt and sorrow and fear that would come upon us of the Church of the Living God when we decide to go against the Lord and give in to our flesh. Let's continue. For I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, took us out of our last our lost life, okay, and redeemed thee out of the house of servants. And I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, consulted, and what Balaam the son of Beor answered him from Shittim unto Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. He hath shewed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee? 
but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. The Lord's voice crieth unto the city, and the man of wisdom shall see thy name. And the man of wisdom, and the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Oh. And the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Hear ye the rod, and who, who hath appointed it? And now go to Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1 verses 10 under verse 20. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams, and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks, or of lambs, or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand, to tread my courts? Bring no more vain. Circle that word. Bring no more, circle it, vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with it. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Empty service unto the Lord. Emptiness, vain. Going through the motions. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. They are trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear your hands are full of blood. Church of living God, do you have stuff clinging to your hands, huh? Wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek Judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And in verse 18, you can tie in our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, quite easily into that verse. Specifically, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. And there are some today who say that obedience isn't a requirement. Y you're nuts. You're, you're crazy. Hmm. Half of, of those who say they are of the Church of the Living God, <coughs> <coughs> beg your pardon, that's the problem. They're obedient unto the flesh. 
while using the Lord Jesus Christ as a scapegoat. Only. <clears throat> Go back to Lamentations chapter 3, verses 55 on to verse 63. I called upon thy name, O Lord, out of the low dungeon. Thou hast heard my voice. Hide not thy ear at my breathing, at my cry. Thou drewest near in the day that I called upon thee. Thou saidest, Fear not. O Lord, thou hast pleaded the causes of my soul. Thou hast redeemed my life. O Lord, thou hast seen my wrong. Judge thou my cause. How many of us of the Church of the Living God have the guts to pray unto the Lord that. Look at that verse. Look at that verse. O Lord, thou hast seen my thou hast seen my wrong. Judge thou my cause. Why he did it. How many of you have the guts? In prayer, to ask the Lord, reveal to me my sin. Lord, if I can't see it, beat me over the head with a brick. See, see that that's the type of prayer, brethren, of one who fears the Lord. I know of very few men very few men who have the guts to go to the Lord. Lord, you've seen what I've done wrong. Show me my sins, Lord. Show me my sins. Lord, that I may repent of them, and turn from them, and trust on you. Like I said, I know very few men who have the guts to pray like that. Thou hast seen all their vengeance and all their imaginations against me. Thou hast heard their reproach, O Lord, and all their imaginations against me. The lips of those that rose up against me and their device against me all the day. Behold, they're sitting down and they're rising up. I am their music. <laughs> Go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 3. Now we're going to see the term backsliding here. And when you do a word search on the word backsliding you will see that it does not appear in the New Testament. Okay? Jeremiah 3, verses 12. Oh, beg your pardon. On to 19. Jeremiah 3, verses 12. On to verse 19. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return, thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord. Look at this. For I am married unto you, doctrinally and dispensationally, specifically for the Jewish people. But are we not the bride of Christ? Are we not bone of his bones, flesh of his flesh?
and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass, when ye be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord, that they shall say no more, the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. Future prophecy. And all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. But I said, How shall I put thee among the children, and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the hosts of nations? And I said, Thou shalt call me my father, and shall not turn away from me. Jeremiah now, chapter 4. Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 4. Okay? We're going to do a little skipping around in Jeremiah chapter 4. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 4. If thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me. And if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight, then shalt thou not remove. And thou shalt swear. The Lord liveth in truth, in judgment, and in righteousness, and the nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him shall they glory. For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your foul ground, and sow not among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your heart. Ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Verse 8. <clears throat> For this, we're skipping in uh, Jeremiah chapter 4. Read the whole chapter, please. Please. Jeremiah chapter uh, 4, verse 8. For this, gird you with sackcloth, lament and howl. For the fierce anger of the Lord is not turned back from us. And skipping also to verse 14. Hmm. Oh, Jerusalem. Wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? Look. If you think you're saved by easy believism, you got another thing coming. Okay? Easy believism has been refuted by many brethren. Okay? The only thing that keeps that thing alive is your flesh and your pride. That's it. Not the scriptures. Okay? But for you of the church of the living God. We, again, we're going to sin. There is going to be a fight between flesh and spirit. They're going to fight. Yes, we're going to sin. Yes. 
But man, <laughs> have you given yourself over to it? With how soon the catching away is, with what's going on. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. Thank the Lord. Verses 1 on to verse 7. Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye. Buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you wherefore wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? Ah ah wait for it. And your labor for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligent unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. The Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. King David was long gone after this. When this was. Uh, when you know. The Lord wrote this through. Prophet Isaiah. Okay. David was long gone. It's a reference unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> Let's continue. Behold. Thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not. And nations that knew not thee. Shall run unto thee. Because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. And you can read verses 8 and 9 on your own time. Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 23 on to verse 24. You've got to remember this. You have to remember this, brethren. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? And you lost people? <laughs> All of us. Nothing is getting past the Lord. Nothing. You lost people. You you you're at the great white throne of judgment. You're you're done. You're done. You are the church of the living God. Who are in sin? You're not getting away with anything. Nobody is. Stop it! Stop it! Repent! Okay? 
what, what's going on right now? Okay? You are the church of the living God? Or are messing around? What's wrong with you? Isaiah chapter 48. Isaiah chapter 48. Verses 1 on to verse 22. Ah, that's the whole chapter, isn't it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 48. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob, which are called by the name of Israel, and come forth out of the waters of Judah, which swear by the name of the Lord, and make mention of the God of Israel, but not in truth, nor in righteousness. For they call themselves of the holy city, and stay themselves upon the God of Israel. The Lord of hosts is his name. I have declared the former things from the beginning, and they went forth out of my mouth, and I shewed them. I did them suddenly, and they came to pass, because I knew that thou art obstinate, and thy neck is, a, is an iron sinew, and thy brow brass. I have even from the beginning declared it to thee. Before it came to pass, I shewed it thee. Lest thou shouldest say, Mine idol hath done them, and my graven image, and my molten image hath commanded them. Thou hast heard, see all this, and will not ye declare it? I have shewed thee new things from this time, even hidden things, and thou didst not know them. They are created now, and not from the beginning, even before the day when thou heardest them not. Lest thou shouldest say, Behold, I knew them. Yet thou heardest not, yea, thou knewest not, yea. From that time, from that time that thine ear was not opened, for I knew that thou wouldest deal very treacherously, and was called a transgressor from the womb. For my name's sake will I defer mine anger, and for my praise will I refrain for thee that I cut thee not off. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we believe not, yet is he faithful. He cannot deny himself. Hearken unto me, O Jacob, and Israel my called. I am he. I am the first. I also am the last. Mine hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand hath spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. All ye assemble yourselves and hear, which among them hath declared these things. The Lord hath loved him. He will do his pleasure on Babylon, and his arm shall be on the Chaldeans. I, even I have spoken, yea, I have called him, I have brought him, and he shall make his way prosperous. Come ye near unto me, hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, there am I. And now the Lord God and his Spirit has sent me. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee the prophet, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Oh, that thou hadst hearkened to my commandments. Then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Thy seed also has been... Thy seed also had been as the sand, 
and the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel thereof. His name should not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. <clears throat> Go ye forth of Babylon. Flee ye from the Chaldeans. With a voice of singing declare ye, tell this, utter it even to the end of the earth. Say ye, the Lord hath redeemed his servant Jacob. And they thirsted not when he led them through the deserts. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He clave the rock also, and the waters gushed out. Notice that it's not a capital R rock, but that rock, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, from him proceed living water. Okay? There is no peace, saith the Lord unto the wicked. Now go back to Lamentations. Verses 64 and verse 66. Render unto them a recompense, O Lord, according to the work of their hands. Give them sorrow of heart, thy curse unto them. Persecute and destroy them in anger from under the heavens of the Lord. Go to Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64. <clears throat> oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. And when the melting fire burneth, the fire causeth the waters to boil. To make thy name known to thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. When thou didst terrible things, which when thou didst terrible things, which we look not for, thou camest down, the mountains flowed down at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for them, for him that waiteth for him. Thou meetest him that rejoiceth. Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. Those that remember thee in thy ways, behold, thou art wroth, for we have sinned. And those is continuance, and we shall be saved. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, thou art our Father. We are the clay, and thou art potter. And we are all, and we all are the work of thy hands. Be not wroth very sore, sore O Lord. Neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee, we are all thy people. Thy holy cities are a wilderness. Zion is a wilderness. Jerusalem a desolation. Our holy and our beautiful house, where our fathers praised thee, is burned up with fire, and all our pleasant things are laid waste. Wilt thou refrain thyself for these things, O Lord? Wilt thou hold thy peace and afflict us very sore? Isaiah 65, verses 1 and verse 7 now. Hmm. I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me, unto a nation that was not called by my name. Making reference unto us Gentiles being grafted into them. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. 
a people, a people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificeth in gardens, and burneth incense upon altars of brick, which remaineth among the graves, and lodge in the monuments, which eats swine's flesh, and broth of abominable things is in their vessels, which say, Stand by thyself, come not near me, for I am holier than thou. These are smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. Those who are religious. think they're better than other people. Because you're saved by your belief. Hmm? Or do you think you're better than other people because you think that the Lord is allowing you to get away with something? Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence, but will recompense, even recompense into their bosom. Your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers, together, said the Lord, which have burned incense upon the mountains and blasphemed me upon the hills. Therefore will I measure their former work into their bosom. Now go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Told you we would look at it. This whole video. We need to be very afraid of the Lord right now. Right now. Okay? It's the whole point. The fear of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 3, under verse 13. This is the guy who was laying with his father's wife. Okay? You know this. You know, you know this. For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present, concerning him that has so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. Yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. Look at that. But now I have written unto you not to keep company, if any man that is called, called a brother, be a fornicator, or covetous or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one know not to eat. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Oh, excuse me. Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Okay? 
Look at verse 2. Look at verse 2 here, where it says, And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. Well, we're not judging you. We're not judging you. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're, we're accepting. This is when you need us. You're living in grotesque sin. That's not even named among the Gentiles, even though it's named among the Gentiles today. But we're not going to judge you. <clears throat> yeah. And look at verse 5, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. That the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Hand it over to Satan for the destruction of your flesh. Because you're messing around, Mr. Church of the Living God. Like I said, this is not to all of you, but some of you. Now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 8 on to verse 12. Now, verses 8 on to verse 12, especially verse 10, has twofold. Godly sorrow, well, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. You have godly sorrow that brings you on to salvation, okay? But when you're messing around with the Lord, okay, when you are messing around with the Lord, okay, let's read this. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I did not repent, though I did repent. For I perceived that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorry, sorrow to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, right here, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. Okay? Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. Okay? Sorrow to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner they know they had messed up they know they knew that they were in sin okay verse 9 is for the church of the living god okay verse 10 for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of but the sorrow of the world worketh death but the sorrow of the world worketh death. We as the church of the living God have godly sorrow, yes. But godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. To salvation not to be repented of. Godly sorrow is a requirement for your salvation. Why do you think all the easy believism heretics like to jump over it? Because they're not sorry. But they're just believe, just believe. Okay, but in verse 9, getting right with the Lord. Are you right with the Lord? Are you in fellowship with the Lord right now? Hmm? <clears throat> For behold, this self same thing that you sorrowed after a godly sort. What carefulness it wrought in you. Now this is the fruit of uh, sorrowing after a godly sort. What carefulness it wrought in you. Yea. What clearing of yourselves. Yea. What indignation. Yea. What fear. Yea. What vehement desire. Yea. What zeal. Yea. What revenge. In all things you have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter, the fruit of godly sorrow. 
the fruit of godly sorrow. But carefulness, clearing of yourselves, indignation, fear, desire, zeal, revenge. <clears throat> when you are out of fellowship with the Lord, and the Lord chastens you, and you get right with the Lord. Verse 11, that ought to be your heart. Those things ought to be there. Your zeal, revenge for what you have done, that I don't want to do it ever again. Doesn't say that you won't. Look at verse 12. Wherefore, though I wrote unto you, I did it not for the cause, for his cause that had done the wrong, nor for his cause that suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. Now go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, verses 17 on to verse 21. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are, are found sinners, is therefore Christ a minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Frustrate the grace of God. And verse 18, For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Hmm? First John. First John. Verse, uh, chapter 1, verses 6 on to verse 10. First John 6 on the verse 10. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, this works both ways, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Do you have unconfessed sin in your life? Hmm? How's your fellowship with the Lord? First hmm? Corinthians chapter 11. First Corinthians chapter 11. Verses 28 on to verse 32. told you we would get to this but let a man examine now this is talking about the Lord's Supper the point is self-examination 
But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread, and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Hebrews. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1, on to verse 11. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1, on to verse 11. Now this is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. <laughs> but chastening? Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, <clears throat> and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not, ye have not yet resisted on the blood, striving against sin. <laughs> yeah. And have and ye have forgotten the exhortation, which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards, not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Um, Church of the Living God, if you're being chastened, you get down on your face. You know, put your nose on the floor, in the carpet, whatever. And repent and get right with the Lord. Endure the chastening, which we so rightly deserve. But see, if you're not of the Church of the Living God, this is foreign to you. Because where's your chastening? Hmm. Are you being chastened right now, brother, sister? How's that neck of yours? Is it a little stiff? Finally, go to Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 5 on to verse 8. Examine yourselves. Whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? 
But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. I, I beg your pardon, excuse me one second. Look, we all sin. There is no such thing as sinless perfection. Not today. <laughs> um, but brethren, There's no time. We need to redeem the time for the days are evil. Okay? We mustn't waste our time. And if you are of the church of the living God and you're in sin, justifying wickedness and bitterness, In putting yourself before our Lord Jesus Christ and his word, the authorized version of the scriptures. Yeah, you're, you're going to heaven if you're of the church of the living God, saved, converted. Yeah, you're, you're going to go to heaven. But how about getting to the judgment seat and having our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be ashamed? I don't, I don't want that. How about you? How about you? Hmm. You know, so many of you like to nitpick about things. But the fact of the matter is, here's our standard. Here's what we adhere our life on to, the scriptures, okay? We live our life according to the scriptures by faith and practice, okay? That's what King James scripture believers are supposed to do, okay? We ain't perfect. No, of course not. We're going to sin. you fear the Lord? It's a, take a few minutes. Think about that. Think about that. That was That's the point of this entire video. And we saw the contrast of what God will do and his mercy. Okay? His anger and his mercy. His wrath and his mercy. We are not appointed on to wrath. We are not going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. But if you think you're going to get away scot-free, this church of the living God, the Lord living within you, you got another thing coming. There's no time for messing around. You're either of the church of the living God or you're not. And I'm going to say something really blunt. If I have doubts about you. I'm not really going to give you too much of my time. There are those of you who are lost who might ask questions and stuff like that. I get that. Right, a bit actually, but um, you know, you know, at this point, 
we don't have the time to mess around. So get right. Fear ye the Lord. Okay? That's going to be it for this video. All right? May our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be magnified. That, that's all I care about. That's all I care about. That's all I care about. Thank you so much for watching if you did, if you do. And thank you so much to every single one of you. Thank you so very much to every single one of you who has given on to us. You know who you are. We could never repay you. But we are your servants. Thank you. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.